Hello and welcome to YouTube blog day number 138. This is where I measure and track what's going on behind the scenes, offering up insights on lessons learned. In Medium, where I have two articles posted, over the past 60 days, the views have doubled from 4,000 up to 8.3,000, and the average reading time didn't change at all. It remained at exactly 4 minutes 36 seconds. On YouTube, over the past 60 days, my channel's doubled most metrics. Sure, the actual numbers are still tiny, 5,000 views, 112 subscribers, but the trend is right. It's increasing geometrically. There's the date of the last post, and now the trend, instead of being flat, is picking up and increasing. I suspect the following factors are contributing to this. Most viewers want to see a person, and my introvert desire to remain invisible impedes the performance, so I have to get over it. Factor number two, this is a compound interest game. So I'm building evergreen content, and I just need to stick to it no matter what. And over time, the views, the algorithm ties together who views what, and it just takes time. And as long as the content doesn't age out, it is viable for a couple of years, then it'll build on itself. And factor number three, I would like to believe that the tools I'm building and templates that I'm building, where I put in the links to YouTube and GitHub, is slowly percolating and making its way out in the wild. And then people, I don't know what percentage, some small fraction of percent of the people using the tools will go back and view YouTube. Over the past 90 days, YouTube has bumped up the impressions, the search and recommendations by 130%, but my views went up even faster at 232%. So that's a good thing. And I suspect that's why YouTube ramped up the impressions and started growing them a lot more. Uh, as so long as the views outpaces the impressions, I'll keep doing it. But if the views drop off and or the amount of view time drops off, then they flatten out. We'll see some of that later. Uh, I can see in the analytics on days where YouTube greatly increased, like it'll spike here and throw up a whole bunch of impressions. But the views on those days don't go up as much or maybe don't go up, or even decrease a little bit. There's reasons why. And then YouTube will turn right around and drop the number of impressions. So, and I'm not showing it here. Way back when I had an article posted in Medium, it spiked like a thousand percent, the viewership. Uh, because Google thought, ooh, this video tied to that article has a whole bunch of people come from the outside and it started ramping it up. But <laughs> my uh, click-through rate fell through the floor. At that point, it was about 20%, which is really high. It dropped down to less than 1%. And the next day or two, bam, Google, uh, YouTube dropped off the, the impressions. So they, their algorithm is definitely monitoring impressions. When they increase the impressions, they expect to see views go up. Yay, good. And they also expect, we'll see in a minute, uh, average read time and other stuff to go up. And when it doesn't, they drop back down the impressions. So it's nice to see the impressions that were in the 100 to 200 range, now comfortably above 1,100, 1,200, 1,500 a day, sometimes 2,000. That drives a lot of traffic. Secretly, secret plan, I'm hoping that over time as I build more tools and templates, that'll trigger folks from the outside who are using those to click the links within those to come over and visit YouTube. That outside browse traffic will increase the views and then Google will, or uh, YouTube will go, oh, the impressions only increased a little bit or, fl or were flat and yet the views went up, something's going on and then they'll start to increase the impressions. So it's all a complex whack-a-mole type of a algorithm where there's a bunch of things going on, a bunch of levers and switches. And I think a couple of them I'm getting dialed in, but anyway, we'll see. Regarding YouTube engagement metrics, past 90 day window is good. Watch time is up 218%, but that's mostly because YouTube increased the impressions. Uh, unfortunately, the wider audience isn't watching as long. So where does the time go? Well, now I'm up to 737 hours total, building all the videos, content, tools, everything for data research labs. And for the past 197 days, 527 hours have been spent on videos and 210 hours are overhead on top of that reading, learning, configuring, deploying, programming, freeware, building templates, etc. So what's the cumulative time analysis look like? Well, I'm at 16.6 hours of total video created across 72 videos, up from 14.3 hours about two months ago. Efficiency has slipped a bit. It's 28.3 minutes of effort creating a video per one minute of video filmed. That's up from 26.2. Uh, there's overhead time too. It improved a little bit, 10.6 minutes of overhead. So overall, it's almost 39 minutes of total effort per one minute of video. 
that comes out at the end. 39 minutes of input, one minute of output. Um, and I believe for me, I don't, I don't know it'll get better than that, 35 minutes. And I certainly have had videos that are 50, 60, 70 minutes of effort per one minute of video. So that, that's the range. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.